Good morning. It's a pleasure to welcome you to First Presbyterian Church this morning for our worship service. Great to have you here. We do think we have Facebook up this morning, and let's thank our booth staff for all their diligent work behind the scenes. And Mike Harris was a consultant in the booth today, so thank you all. We were just a few minutes away from having audio, but no video, but I understand we are being seen out in the world today. So those of you who are joining us virtually, hopefully you will greet one another in Christ's love while we in the sanctuary do the same. Please stand and join us in that. Hopefully you've taken a moment and register attendance on the Ritual of Friendship pad that's at that end of that pew. We'd love to know that you are with us today, so please pass that down the sign. Looks just like this. We'd love everybody to have an opportunity to record their attendance today. If you're looking for Jeremy this morning, you'll have to look north. He was with our group at the Montreat Music Conference. His family flew into Asheville to join him, and they are making their way back to New York right now for a little vacation time. So, how do you cover for Jeremy? Oh, about five or six folks are what we usually use. So, let's thank Sharice Harris, who's on the piano today. Griffin Powell is going to be on the guitar. I sound like a rock concert here, don't I? On the drums, we'll have Sean Ivey. On the bass, you'll have Ashley Stroud also doing vocals, and Sylvester on vocals. Let's thank our praise band also. Yesterday we had our Saturday soup kitchen and the Ivy family and others took that on. The Ivy family was the head cook. Kelly and Sean and Lindsay were involved in that and also friend Bailey who was with them. Then we had Karen, Judy, Sam and Raquel and Kim and Christian and Christy. That group yesterday did sloppy joes, mac and cheese, fresh watermelon, tater tots, of course all the breads and desserts from Publix that we so appreciate. And because of their work yesterday and us having this opportunity, 98 people did not go to bed hungry last night. So let's thank that group so much for what they've done. 
Looking at the schedule, it looks like Betts Huff and Debbie Rubner, Rubner are in charge this coming week. We've had great sign-ups from elders, deacons, and other folks in the church, and so we've got good things going. Later in July, it looks like we're starting to need help again, so check the board downstairs or call the church office. And I think all of our August dates except one are open right now, so if you could help us go ahead and get those signed up, we would appreciate that. Our uh, Backpacks for Bethel, that was a vacation Bible school challenge, and I understand the number is in the... 126 backpacks right now, and those will go to the Bethel Farm Worker Ministry. They serve um, families in the greater Tampa area and Waimama, and they're getting backpacks ready to send kids back to school. We will still take your donations of backpacks for the next couple days, and then we have to transport them down to Bethel. So thank you so much for all of you who have donated backpacks and school supplies. It's a tremendous blessing there. Looking here, we need prayers. Our Music conference at Montreat has just concluded and most of the folks are either heading on north or they're safely back this way. Next Saturday, our senior high group will leave and they will head up to the Montreat Senior High Conference. So we ask you to be in prayer for them and their travels. And then just about a few days after they return, our middle schoolers go up to Ocala for that conference. So pray for everybody involved in summer camps and conferences. There are lots of activities still in the life of the church this summer, so go on our website. Please join us and see what's happening. It's so good that you're with us today. Again, we thank our musicians. We thank you all for being here. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God. Show. 
Good morning. Will you please join me in the call to worship this morning? Happy are those who delight is in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season. And all that they do, they we come again to focus on the law of God and to listen for God's word as we worship God. And let's continue in that worship as we join together to sing our gathering hymn, Blessed Jesus at Your Word, hymn number 395. Please stand as you are able. Please be seated. Because of such great mercy, God is ready to forgive all of the ways that we failed to live in faithfulness. Relying on that mercy, let us together confess our sins to God this morning. Almighty God, from the moment that you opened your mouth and uttered your word, the world came into being. You have spoken to Adam and Eve, Abraham and Sarah, and men and women throughout human history, and their lives became full and complete. We confess that we have not always listened for you to speak to us each day. Forgive us for failing to open the Bible regularly with an eager anticipation that those words are intended for us. Forgive us for allowing the hustle and bustle of our busy lives to drown out that still small voice through which you often whisper the words we need to hear. Help us to turn to your holy word in the scriptures so that we might come face to face with the word of life in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray.
Gracious Lord, hear these words and may we feel that mercy again anew. It is in your son's name we pray. Amen. Feel that fresh winds of the Holy Spirit in Christ as his grace and peace washes over each of us. For I declare to you in Christ Jesus that you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Music is a beautiful thing in the church and so are the sounds of children. And I hear that down in the corner over here. Travis and Kathleen Sowards are bringing their daughters for the sacrament of baptism today. And we're going to welcome them down at the font. And Elder Steve Sowards is assisting. To us. Listen for God's word as it comes to us in the gospel according to Mark. They were bringing little children to Jesus so that Jesus might touch them and the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw it, he was indignant and he said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took them up his arms and he blessed them and he laid his hands upon them. Dearly beloved, the sacrament of baptism is the word of God made visible as ordained by our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> baptism is to be understood as a sign of God's power and mercy and cleansing us of our sin and as a means whereby we are identified with Christ in his death and resurrection. Baptism also represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into the lives of God's people. It's a sign of our engrafting into Christ and our entrance into the church. The baptism of infants and children has a particular particular significance for us because it reminds us that this is a sacrament of grace that long before a child is conscious of God God has chosen this child as God's own in this sacrament we declare that we are part of the body of Christ and our children belong to that body as a part of the household and family of God all of us are to see in this sacrament the fact that we are invited into a relationship with God as we've been claimed by baptism ourselves and we're involved in an ever-expanding process in faith. Today you will hear these parents pledge to bring up their children to serve God and you the members of this family and the members of this congregation on behalf of the whole church of Jesus Christ will be asked to join in your pledge to show these children what it is to love and serve God. Kathleen and Travis, I ask you today, is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Do you trust in him? And do you intend your children to be his disciples, to obey his word, and to show his love? Let us bow before God in prayer. Most merciful and loving Father, we thank you for the church of your dear son, for the ministry of the word, for the sacraments of grace. We praise you that you've given us so gracious promises concerning our children that in your mercy you call them to you, marking them with this sacrament as a singular token and pledge of your love. We ask you now to set apart this water from a common to a sacred use. Grant that what we do here on earth may be confirmed in heaven. In humble faith we present you these children. We ask you to receive them as your own. Fill them with your spirit and keep them forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So Charlotte, I want you to see for a second this is just water. Can you touch that? That's just water. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you a little water on your sister's head first. So, can you tell me, what is the Christian name of this child? Emma Kathleen Sowers. Emma Kathleen, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, what is the Christian name of this child? Charlotte Mary Sowers. Charlotte Mary, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Spirit now be upon both of you from this time forth and forever. 
Friends, these children are now received into Christ's church. Do you, the members of this family, the members of this congregation, in the name of the whole church of Jesus Christ, undertake with these parents the Christian nurture of these children, so that in due time these girls may confess their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior? And will you endeavor by your example and fellowship to strengthen their family ties with the household and family of God? If so, will you answer, we do. Now, Charlotte, we've got a couple things I want to share with you all today. This says that Charlotte Mary Sowards, the daughter of Travis and Kathleen Sowards, received baptism at this church today. And I've signed that, and we're going to pick two witnesses from the family and friends. Now, that was yours. This one has Emma's name that Emma Kathleen Sowards was baptized today. Now, you're going to have to help me today because I have something for you and Emma. These are called cradle crosses. Yes, she gets to pick. <laughs> and so if you hold that up, it spells Jesus. Because today we said that we know that Jesus loves all of us, and we especially celebrate that Jesus loves you. So, which cross would you like? That one? Okay, there you go. And this one is going to be Emma's. And I'm going to give that to Mommy. And Daddy, would you be willing to let me hold on yeah, to little Emma? Little. Yeah. Careful, she's a lot right now. Yeah. <laughs> she sure does. And would you like to walk around with us? Let's go meet some folks. Do you know these people over here? This is your family. Ooh, lean back just a little bit, Emma. Don't want you wobbling there. She sure does. Friends, it's a pleasure to introduce to you the newest members of the Church of Jesus Christ. This is Charlotte Mary Sowers, and this is Emma Kathleen Sowers, Children of the Covenant. And so you know this crowd here, we're going to take a little further walk. Why don't you all come as a family? We're going to go and let these folks look a little closer at us because actually... Oh, yes, and, and then eventually we'll go to the playground. <laughs> these are also members of our Christian family. And so Charlotte... We've got the outdoor playground, but we also have the coloring tables back here. And you may want to come back here. But friends, it is such a joy to welcome children into the household and family of God. These little girls will be visiting in Winter Haven often. Right now, they actually live in New York City. But as they're down for visits, we will see them in worship and you will get to live up to your baptismal vows. And that means that when they look at you and study you, they're going to see what God's people and Jesus' followers are all about. So, an interesting journey, and so good to have them with us on this part of the journey. Now, Charlotte, that cross that you have came a long way. You came down from New York. That cross came from the country of Honduras. And every time our mission teams go to Honduras, we look for those Jesus cradle crosses and we bring them back so that we can share faith. You have done great. Let's go back over here where your family is. And we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Now I'm going to ask all the other children who are present to join me down front for our time with younger disciples. And I will get the book that I left up in my chair.
Charlotte, you want to come over and see the book? Room there? Perfect. How many of you know this book? I didn't think you did. I had not seen this book until about a month ago or two months ago. This book is called Carlo and the Really Nice Librarian. And it was written by Jessica Spaniel. So what I'd like to do is share a story with you today. Carlo and the very nice librarian. One day, Dad took Carlo and Crackers to the new library. Have you ever been to a library? Let me see your hand if you've been to a library. Okay, maybe a school library or a public library? Well, they're on their way to the library. Wow, said Carlo when he saw all the books. Dad called after Carlo. I'm going to be just around the, this corner if you need me. Look at all the things that are in the library. The library was very impressive. There were colorful posters. There were chairs with wheels on them. There was the longest desk Carlo had ever seen. Come on, crackers, said Carlo. Does your library have a long desk in it? Yeah. No. My wife is a librarian at elementary school, and they've got a pretty long desk in there. Can I help you? Who is that? It's an alligator. That's right. But this is a giraffe, and this is a cat, so maybe the alligator is part of the story. Yikes, cried Carlo. Would you be scared of an alligator in the library? Yeah. Yes, maybe. Hello, I'm Mrs. Chinka. What's your name? Carlo, whispered Carlo. And who is this, asked Mrs. Chinka. This is Crackers, he's my cat. Mrs. Chinka, the librarian, seemed a little scary. Yeah. What sort of books do you like, Carlo, asked Mrs. Chinka. All sorts, Carlo said quietly. Very good. Well, let me tell you about our library books. Come on, Carlo. Follow me. What kind of books do you think they're going to find? You know what I found in some of the libraries? I don't see many encyclopedias anymore. I think those are all online. But let's see what books they find. Look at some of the books. Which one do you think you would want to read? That one, that one looks pretty cool. It's got two owls in it. How about the other ones? Any of them look good? Oh, you like that one. We'll get one book for the whole family then. Which book do you think you would read in there? Oh, about a castle. A one you can chew on? Wait to the end of this, there's a surprise. <laughs> Which books do you think you would want? Here's one about a snake and a ladder. There's about a butterfly. Some pretty cool ones, aren't there? This is, this is a lovely bedtime story, Mrs. Chinka said, about this one here. Just look at the pictures, these beautiful pictures, Carlo. And this is a very exciting read. Carlo couldn't believe how much Mrs. Chinka knew about books. This is one of my favorites, said Mrs. Chinka. Oh, I've got that one at home, Carlo said excitedly. Carlo was beginning to think that Mrs. Chinka wasn't as scary as he had first thought. She was being such a good and helpful librarian. Would you like to read a book with me, Mrs. Chinka, asked Carlo. You would like to read a book? Okay. Carlo thought that would be really fun. Okay, make a car noise. 
That's exactly right. Vroom, vroom, he said when he saw the cars. Somebody make a clock sound. Tick tock, he said when he saw the clock. You all are pretty good at this, but get ready for the next page. Roar! Mrs. Chinka said when she saw the lion. Carlo laughed so much that he got his tail into a tangle. Next, Mrs. Chinka asked Carlo to help her with her work. You have such a lovely long neck, Carlo. Could you put these picture these books on the top shelf? Carlo really liked helping Mrs. Chinka. You would do that with your long neck? You'd probably climb. Then Mrs. Chinka gave Carlo his very own library card. Thank you so much, Carlo exclaimed. After Carlo had finished choosing his books, Dad said it was time to go home. Carlo felt sad to leave. He couldn't believe that he had ever been scared of Mrs. Chinka. Was that alligator nice? Yes. Very. Mrs. Chinka used Carlo's new library card to check out all his books. Bye-bye, Carlo. Bye-bye, crackers. See you again soon, she said. Bye-bye, Mrs. Chinka, Carlo said. As soon as Carlo got home, he showed Mum his library books and told her all about Mrs. Chinka. She's really nice and such good fun, said Carlo. She sounds lovely, darling, said Mum. It wasn't until Carlo opened his last book that he noticed something strange. There was a tiny bite-sized piece mi bit missing. Do you see that in the corner of the book? Mrs. Chinka really does love books. <laughs> the end. But look at the upper corner here. Ms. Chinka's been working on that one too. What kind of books do you like to get at the library? Alligator. Alligator books, I love them. What kind of books do you get at the library? Titanic books. What other books do you get at the library? What books would you get at the library? Oh, I Survived Shark books. Has anybody read any of the books Who Would Win? You read the Who Would Win books? I spent the last eight days with a six-year-old, so I know those pretty well. What other books do you like? Guys, what books would you get at the library? Nonfiction, okay, very good. Well, today we're going to go a little bit further into some neat books. Oh. I've been with my six-year-old grandson, and so I've all picked out a book for next year's Good News for God's Children. It's called Steve, Raised by Wolves. <laughs> Fascinating book. So you might want to look it up at your local library. It's a picture book, of course. That's what I love most. Well, we're going to have some fun today talking about books. And actually, I think every one of you here already has the library that I'm going to talk about in today's sermon. So you just listen if you'd like, and you can listen back at the coloring table just as well. And thank you for enjoying with me Carlo and the really nice librarian. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads, and let's talk to God in prayer. God, as we gather here today, we thank you for the nice people in our lives. We thank you for those who share things with us. We thank you for the librarians in the world who invite us to get to know and love books. And we thank you for all those who may have taken us to a library. Now watch over us and help us to be helpful, help us to love what we read, and help us to tell stories in such a way that others are invited in too. We thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for coming today and thanks for helping me with our story.
May we, through the giving of our tithes and offerings, give thanks for how God has been alive in our world and been a source of grace for each of us, as our morning's offerings will now be received.
Most holy God, who hears our prayers and answers them and gives us more than we can ask or imagine. Accept these offerings and use them to your glory, that even now we might imitate your coming reign of justice, peace, and love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Will you join with me as we offer our prayers this morning as God's people together? God of heaven and earth, creator of all things seen and unseen, we join with the church through the ages, praying that you may hear the prayers of your people and answer them. And so we pray for our world, for the political leaders to be granted wisdom and courage, so that they may enact for the common good the justice you command. Grant intelligence and generosity to leaders in business and industry so that they may provide dignity and safety for those in their realm of care. And we pray that you may grant such care and the mantle of responsibility to those who serve as our police, firefighters, and emergency responders, that they may stay safe and provide true assistance to those they are called to protect and serve. We also pray that you may grant imagination and passion to the educators and artists so that they may give clear guidance and true vision, enabling us to praise you for the wonder and beauty of your world. We pray that you may great str grant strength and fortitude for those who serve in our armed forces so that whether they are near or far from home, they may serve with dignity and justice for your people. We pray, gracious Lord, that you may grant compassion and skill to the healers and caregivers so that the sick and suffering may know your touch as a foreshadowing of the resurrection. We also pray this day for all who are suffering at the hands of the violent and power hungry, the greedy and malicious, the ignorant or misguided, and the powers of evil beyond human control. May each one who is afflicted find comfort in your son's faith, hope, and love to overcome such situations truly, fully, and to thrive as you intended for your beloved children. And we offer prayers this day asking comfort for all who suffer, physically, mentally, or emotionally. Assure them that they suffer not alone, and may we, as your disciples, lay a cool touch upon the afflicted and ex expand our compassion when we offer such care. Finally, glorious God, we pray that you may grant your church a bold vision and a daring love to speak and act on behalf of your mission. Empower your church with the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel with authority, to spread it liberally the grace of Jesus the Christ, to the day when all tongues shall declare Christ is Lord. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lessons for today start in the book of 2 Timothy. I would invite you to turn there in the Bible that you may have brought from home or the Bible that you'll find in the pew. Our reading today is from the New Revised Standard Version, 2 Timothy chapter 3 beginning with verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient and equipped 
for every good work. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I found this children's book in our church library. Carlo and the really nice librarian had been placed in a little easel in our children's library by Bethany or Jonathan Owen, our church's really nice librarians. It was there on the top shelf so that an eager reader might spot it and jump into the story. And they, it worked. I took the bait. That's what librarians do. Like, like Mrs. Chinka demonstrated for Carlo and Crackers, librarians don't just curate the collection. They do all that they can to invite people to love the books in the library. Jonathan and Bethany are seated in the back where they usually sit. It's the closest seats to their libraries back there. And for two decades now, they have admirably been serving in the long line of really nice librarians in our church. They have put in countless hours since 2003 or 2004. And turn around and look at Jonathan and Bethany. Let's thank them for their work. Now, if you're here for the very first time, you may not know where our libraries are. But if you've been around the church for a while, you know that we have three incredible libraries. There's the Price Library. It's the one that's off the north narthex. It's named for Don and Evelyn Price. Don was pastor here for 20 years. I served under him as an associate pastor. Don was a voracious reader. And many of the books still in our library that you find with highlights in them may have come from Don's personal library. The Price Library is a really incredible general collection. We also have the Mary Spencer Reference Library. Now for many years it was just out the doors and back to the right there, but it moved to the education building recently. So it is under a renovation phase right now. You'll see some of the books stacked on top there. They're waiting for the new bookcases to arrive. But from the time that I first started here in the mid-80s, I have been impressed at the quality of our theological and biblical library. It was named for Mary Spencer, a member of the church, who also was a great supporter of theological education. And this library is in the other building, and it's open anytime the church is open, if you have a question and need to see some fabulous biblical and theological resources. And then we have our recently relocated children's library. It had been in the other building, but we're having so many people here in worship that thought they might be able to take advantage of a children's library that we moved it over here to where the reference library was. It is a wonderfully inviting place, and right there on that bookcase is where I first spotted Carlo and the really nice librarian, right here at First Press. Right here in the church is where I've also found some other wonderful stories in a library that we give to people. We hand that library to our third graders every fall. We give that library to our sixth graders as they start the confirmation training. And we give that library also to our high school graduates. We give them a Bible, and the Bible actually is a library. This is a little poster that I use with confirmands to show them that the Bible contains the Old Testament and the New Testament, and then to show them that in each of those divisions, there are other subdivisions, ways that we group the books of the Bible. In our tradition, we say there are 66 books that make up the Bible. And those books are a biblical library. Second Timothy reminded us from childhood we've known the sacred writings because they instruct us for salvation and they're good for teaching, reproof for correction, and training in righteousness so that all of us will be proficient and equipped for every good work. You see, each Bible that we give or receive is a wonderful library of the story of God's love for God's people and many of us here have fallen in love with a special library. 
The first five books in the Bible are called the Pentateuch, the books of Moses. They begin the story. One of the readings I love from the book of Genesis is near the end of the creation story. It sums it all up in Genesis 1.31 by saying, God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, a sixth day. That story is a story of creation. It takes us through tales like Noah and the Ark and Abraham and Sarah. We get the story of the Exodus and the parting of the Red Sea and the expanding story of God's people known as Israel. All of that falls in a part of the Bible that we call the books of the law. If you just look at your chart, you see that there are five books listed there. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. In Exodus 20 and in Deuteronomy 5, we find the most important inscription of the law. God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Have no gods before me. Do not make for yourself an idol or an image. Do not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. And you shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's another shelf in our biblical library that's called history. It's a holy history. Just this past week, I had a chance to take a spark story Bible to my six-year-old grandson and start reading some of the stories to him. Listen to the story of David and Goliath as it comes to us in this book that we use in our Christ Kids program and in our children's ministry. King Saul and his army looked out from their mountain hideout. Their enemies, the Philistines, were camped on the opposite mountain. In a valley between stood Goliath, the tallest man Saul had ever seen. Who will fight me, Goliath roared, waving his spear. Who can face the mighty Goliath, he shouted, lifting his sword. Paul and his army were afraid. They could not win against the Philistines, and they could not beat Goliath. Send your best warrior, Goliath ordered. Let him fight against me, and if I win, you will be our slaves. And if your soldier wins, we will serve you and your God. Saul waited, but no one stepped forward to take Goliath's challenge. Saul felt a small tug on his sleeve, and looking down, he saw a boy, David, the young shepherd boy. I will do it, King Saul, David said. I will fight Goliath. You're a boy. How can you beat a gigantic man like Goliath, Saul turned to go. Wait, King Saul, David said. God protects me from wolves and bears that go after my sheep. God will protect me now. David reached down and picked up five smooth stones. In his right hand, he carried the same sling he used to chase away the wolves and the wild animals. Saul patted David's head and pointed down the rocky path leading to the valley. Goliath laughed when he saw David. You are the warrior they send out against me? David slipped his hand into his pouch and selected a stone. I'm not afraid of your spear and your sword, Goliath, David said. God will help me. David rushed toward Goliath, swinging his sling. The smooth stone flew through the air and hit Goliath in the forehead. Down, 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 Goliath fell. Down fell his sword, down fell his spear, down fell his mighty shield. David picked up Goliath's bronze helmet from the ground and held it high in the air. Saul and his soldiers rose up with a shout. David, a small shepherd boy, had beaten the mighty Goliath. When the Philistines saw that Goliath had fallen, they were afraid and ran away. Trusting in God gave David the courage when he needed it the most. Again, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We go through these stories in the history and we find incredible tales. There's also a collection called Poetry and Wisdom Books. 
Now, I have a lot of Bibles on my shelf in my office, and one of them is a little King James Bible that I got from the estate of my great aunt. Anytime I turn to the 23rd Psalm, it seems to come out in the King James. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have in this library the writings of the prophets. Isaiah is such a rich, rich edition. Listen to a reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you've increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with harvest, as people exult when dividing the plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you've broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors, all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son has been given us, authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. There shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All of that builds us up to the Gospels and the start of the New Testament, and the story of God's love for us. The Gospels are rich. I love all of them. And even John, which for a long time was my least favorite, contains incredible parts of the story, like John 3.16. For God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. John has incredible stories, and if we had more time, I would read a number of them to you. One that I have to read comes from John chapter 14. When Jesus told his disciples not long before he died, let not your hearts be troubled, Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him, for you have seen him. And then in John chapter 20, verse 30 says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have life in his name. Friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are four gospels that tell us what Jesus did while he was on this earth. And then after Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his disciples who had come to him during that time, you wait around. I will send the power of the Holy Spirit and you will be my church. We have a book called Church History. It's the Acts of the Apostles. 
It's one little book, but it takes the story and expands it for us. It starts in chapter 1 like this. In the first book, Theophilus, because Luke wrote a gospel and this. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he'd chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave to Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Again, the word of the Lord. Be to God. Then we go to letters. And friends, I am well conscious of the time, so I'm only going to read little teeny bits of some of my favorite letters, like Romans chapter 8. The very end of that chapter, beginning with verse 38, says, I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Writing to the church in Philippi, in Philippians chapter 4, Paul, the same author, goes on by saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone, for the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then John pens some letters, and from the one called 1 John chapter 4, beginning with verse 7, he says, Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not know God, love does not know God, for God is love. And God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent the only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to be atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and God's love is perfected in us. Again, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then there's a little end time prophecy that is included. It's the very last book of the Bible and it's the one that confuses people a lot. But in Revelation chapter 21, we find some incredible comfort. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among the mortals. God will dwell with them and they will be God's people and God will be in the midst of them. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the former things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I'm making all things new. He said, Write this for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Again, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In a little book that I picked up in the children's library here at our church, Mrs. Chinka, the really nice librarian, asked Carlo the giraffe, what kind of books do you like? Are you looking for a good bedtime story? How about one with great pictures and images? How about one that's a real exciting read? For friends, the same can be asked of us. Do you like law? Do you like history? 
Do you like poetry and wisdom? Do you like prophecy? Do you like the good news of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ and how that has changed the world one believer at a time so that we can all have an abundant life here and now and forever? Well, friends, if you like any of that, you'll find it in one book that is actually 66 books in one. The library that is God's story of love for us is called the Bible. You should check it out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, join me now as we continue our worship with hymn 462, I Love to Tell the Story. I missed one announcement this morning. It's about next Sunday. Come to worship at 10 and enjoy a wonderful day with us and stay for our patriotic luncheon. I need to remind you of that because right after this service, there are four men in this congregation that will take 120 pounds of pork butt home with them. They will smoke it and bring it back next Sunday for you. We'll have pulled pork sandwiches, we'll have slaw, we'll have baked beans, We'll have patriotic dessert, so come out for that. 
and we'll have good old American beverages, probably some sweet tea and lemonade to go with that. So please come and join us. No reservations are requested or required. There'll be plenty of food. We'll have a little patriotic sing-along at the tables downstairs and a great time to wrap up our 4th of July week celebration. So please come and join us next week. Now, for the charge, I go to the very front cover of Carlo and the Really Nice Librarian. Here it says, two of these three apply to us. Number one, this book must be returned to the library on or before the date stamped. With your Bibles, we don't want them back. We want you to keep them so you can apply the other two things. That book must be enjoyed and that book must be read over and over again. You have a library. It's the library of the story of God's love for each of us. Make sure you crack the pages regularly. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. You are the one.